This is your class live for your project checks and balances. Um, when you're writing this essay, please don't talk to me about banking and finance. That is not what we're talking about here today. We are talking about checks and balances in the form of government. Uh, here in this picture, you see the White House, the Judiciary, and the Legislative ho House. Home. <laughs> house. Um, and they check and they balance each other. Um, we're going to get a little bit more into what that means in this essay. Um, and by the time you are finished with it, you should be a pro and expert in understanding separation of powers and checks and balances. So this is an explanatory essay. And the first thing I think you should always do when writing an essay is ask yourself, what is this essay asking me to do? Uh, these are direct quotes from the assignment. It says, outline the concept of checks and balances. Explain uh, how each branch checks the other. So we're going to need to explain each branch, explain how they're checking and balancing the other, and explain the whole concept of checks and balances. Now, this is a beautiful, simple, easy way to write this essay because there are three branches of government. Uh, so that gives you your three body paragraphs. It's fantastic. So for your introduction, um, you're going to want to start with some background information. This is a great opportunity to explain the concept of checks and balances. Um, constitutional standard set down by our founding fathers saying we're going to separate powers because remember they were used to a king who really had complete power over what was going on. And they hated it. It was terrible. Uh, in Thomas Paine's common sense, he does he won't even say the king's name. He just says King G. Um, so remember, they hated this concept of, of power belonging in one place. And so they separated power between the legislative branch, the judicial branch, and the executive branch. Um, and that's a great place to put this information is into your background information in your introductory paragraph. Um, I put a thesis in quotes here because really you're not taking a stance and arguing something, you're explaining something. Um, so thesis, use, loosely used here, uh, is more of a topic sentence type thing, where you're going to make some statement about um, the branches of government and checks and balances. And then, of course, an explanation of your main points, which will include the executive, judicial, and legislative branches. Uh, your body paragraphs are going to be three pretty simple, clear-cut paragraphs. Um, you can put them in any order. This is just a alphabetical order I put down here. Um, so, for example, you might talk about the executive branch in your first paragraph, uh, what it is and how it checks the judicial and legislative branch. Um, so, for the executive branch, we're talking about the president, the White House, the cabinet, um, and what he does to check the other branches. So, in this case, we have things like the veto, uh, we have things like appointing judges um, uh, and executive orders and that sort of thing. The judicial branches of court is, of course, the courts. Uh, specifically, we talk about the Supreme Court generally, uh, but it does include all, appell all appellate, federal, and district courts. Um, the way they can check the other branches, specifically, we talk about judicial review. Um, it's a very powerful, powerful thing, and it is used on both the president and the legislative branch. Uh, finally, the legislative branch here, we're talking about the Houses of Congress, uh, the House of Representatives, and the Senate, um, and the ways they might check the executive and judicial branches. Um, we have um, the overriding the veto. Um, and then confirmation of judicial appointees, uh, in addition to a myriad of other ways that they can check and balance each other. Um, so each paragraph should start with a topic sentence, which is going to be an explanation of what that branch of government is. Um, and then going on to your explanations of how those branches of government check each other. Um, again, you might need to get a little technical here. This is where you'll probably need to do some significant amounts of research. Um, and don't be afraid of that. It's okay to research. It's okay to get smarter while you're working on a project. Um, embrace it. It's awesome. Uh, and then finally, your concluding paragraph will need to reestablish your main points, your thesis, and some nice closing background information. I think a fun way to close this kind of essay uh, is in your introduction to talk about the Founding Fathers, and then in your conclusion to talk about what they might think of how we've... Um, interpreted balance, uh, checks and balance system and the separation of powers today. But that's just me. Um, for your body paragraphs, I just want to go into a little bit more about this. Get detailed and specific. Don't just say, well, the executive branch has all the power. 
because it's not true, <laughs> not remotely. Um, talk about what the executive branch can and cannot do. It's okay to look at the Constitution online and, and read Articles 1, 2, and 3 and find out what each branch actually has power to do, because all of those powers are specifically outlined in Articles 1, 2, and 3 of the Constitution. Um, and you'll probably learn a lot about what each branch legally has the ability to do and what um, most people believe they have the ability to do. Um, define your terms. If you're going to talk about impeachment, explain what that is. You can't just say, well, they can impeach a president. What does that mean? Okay, if you're going to talk about judicial review, explain judicial review. Explain Marbury v. Madison and how judicial review was established and what it does. Um, and again, I cannot emphasize enough, explain. Every, every time you're going to use a statement like the president can be impeached, explain what that means. Um, especially if you're talking about impeachment, don't be afraid to talk about the process because it does involve the, both houses of the legislature. Uh, finally, some final thoughts for this project. Don't forget to mention the Constitution and the Founding Fathers somewhere in your essay. Um, remember that you're writing about um, something that is inherent in our Constitution is the separation of powers and the checks and balances that go along with it. Um, so those items probably need to show up somewhere in your essay. Reread your essay, please. I'm begging you. I can't say it enough. Read it to a parent. Read it to a friend. Have someone read it to you. I'll read it to you if you want me to. Um, but this will help you catch any inconsistencies or awkward sentences or anything that just doesn't sound quite right. Um, and finally, when you finish your essay and you've polished it and made it as beautiful as you can, ask yourself, does this essay prove that I understand the separation of powers and checks and balances? If your answer is a little vague, if your answer is maybe or kind of, don't be afraid to rewrite. Don't be afraid to add in information. I'm not saying delete the whole thing and rewrite it. I'm saying go in, edit, tweak, make it better. Okay, because the whole purpose of this essay is for you to prove that you know what you're talking about. And if you don't sound like you know what you're talking about, you're not going to get a good grade, and all of this hard work will have been wasted. So, don't be afraid to take time to polish and make it better. So this was your class live on checks and balances. If you've got questions or concerns, let me know. Otherwise, I will be seeing you in class.